Hello and welcome to the Mesa Public Schools Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. That's strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. I now like to turn it over to our first presenter, DigiPen Institute of Technology. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining here today. Um, just give me one moment to pull up my screen share while I'm doing that. My name is Katie Clark. I work in the Office of Outreach and Admissions at DigiPen Institute of Technology, located in Redmond, Washington. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen at this point. I'm just making sure I can also see the chat here. If you do have any questions during this presentation, please feel free to drop a question in the chat and I'll respond. I will also be um, on the throughout the rest of the presentation to answer any questions in the Q&A box. But to get started, who are we? Who am I? Why are we here today? Um, so like I said, I'm with DigiPen Institute of Technology. We are a private four-year university. We're located in Redmond, Washington, just across the water from Seattle. Um, and our areas of expertise are mainly focused on the interactive media and game design industries. Our, our four areas of study include computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, and music and sound design. So if you have ever wanted to work uh, at a game development company or work on video games, uh, that is our bread and butter. So please uh, let me know what questions you have. But like I said, we're located in Redmond, Washington, just across the water from Seattle and Washington State. Important distinction. Um, it's a really great area to live if you're interested in working in the technology industries. We have Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, and Facebook, all just in a 20-mile radius of our campus, or some of them even in our parking lot. Um, we also have a number of game development companies in our area. Like I said, most of our students are coming here to learn game development or work in the gaming and technology industries. So this is a sampling of some of the game development companies in our area. There's over 450 gaming and tech companies in our backyard. So a lot of great job opportunities, internship opportunities, um, and places to uh, learn from and potentially go on to work at as well. Here's some statistics about our university. Um, as a student body, we have about 1,100 students total. About 950 of those are in our undergraduate programs, of which we have eight different degree programs at the bachelor's level. And about 150 of those students are in our two graduate programs. We have an MFA and an MSCS degree program at the graduate level. Our average class size about, is about 18 students, a lot of opportunities for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Our student to faculty ratio is about 10 to one. Um, and our graduates are credited on over 1600 commercial video game titles. Um, we focus on video games a lot. Students do work outside of that in animation fil industries, film industry and technology industries. But those game titles are really what bring our students here and kind of what it, they're interested in. Um, we were also ranked by a Georgetown University Center on the Ed Education and the Workforce Study as the number one university in Washington State for return on investment uh, for an undergraduate degree and in the top 1% of colleges and universities in the United States. Um, so I recommend checking out that study to see where the colleges you're looking at rank. But that's enough of me talking. I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick, quick clip so you can see some examples of our student work.
So everything that you just saw on the screen did come from examples of student projects, student films, animated films, um, games that they have created, game trailers, or images and videos of students working together in their projects. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, our, all of our degree programs fall into one of the four categories you see on the screen, either computer science, art and animation, game design and development, and music and audio. And students from each of these four general categories work together in those projects. So our projects-based learning is really what binds our students together and allows them to find the success that they need to be successful in post-graduation. So they're gathering their experience, they're working on projects, they're building their portfolios, all starting your sophomore year. You work on projects every year you're with us starting your sophomore year. So by the time you graduate, you have the equivalent of two to four projects to, that you have put your name on and can use in your portfolio. If you're interested in any of these programs, here's some things to think about when you start to prepare. For our computer science programs, we're looking at most closely at your math and your physics background. We do recommend pre-calculus with a B minus or better for students interested in our computer science degrees, but really any math or physics classes you can take is going to be helpful for those. If you're interested in design, you should be thinking about why people make the decisions that they do, what makes them interested in playing different types of games, if you're interested in art, we're going to emphasize your ability to draw from observation, draw realistically, representing with the pencil and paper. And then for our music programs, we do want to see proficiency with the musical instrument as part of your video portfolio. Um, our, up, our deadlines, are, our priority deadline is typically in April 1st. Uh, we do accept applications all the way through July 1st, but we're on a rolling admissions basis. So reach out if you have questions about what that means, and we're happy to explain further and connect with you about what things to think about during the application process. Finally, here's some events and ways to connect with us. We offer both online opportunities, as you can see on the screen right now as well as in-person opportunities. If you happen to come visit our campus in Redmond, we are open for visitors. And here's our contact information. Please feel free to reach out if any of this is interesting to you and we're happy to discuss further. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use that Q&A function at any time to ask questions of all of our schools here today. Up next, we have Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us again. My name is Vera Greck and I am with Worcester Polytechnic Institute or just WPI for short. So to get started, we are a uh, polytechnic institute, which means that we focus on STEM in business, so science, technology, engineering, and math. And we are in the city of Worcester, which is one hour away from Boston in the middle of the state of Massachusetts. We were founded in 1865, so we have been around for quite some time, um, and our population now as it stands is about 4,700 undergraduate students, about um, 2,000 graduate students, and we are 40% female at the undergraduate level as well, which is uh, something that we are very proud of as a STEM school. So moving forward, if the slides will move, there we go. So we have over 50 different degree programs, but you can enroll undecided. Because all of our majors are within these similar categories, we are admitting you to university, which means that once you're in, at any time you can change your major, so you're not applying directly to a major or to a school within WPI. We have 12 different types of engineering, so about two-thirds of our students will study some form of engineering, but our most popular majors are computer science, mechanical engineering, robotics engineering, and biomedical engineering. So we're actually the first university in the United States to offer robotics engineering as a bachelor's level degree and currently the only one to have it as bachelor's, master's and PhD. So you can have double majors, um, so they don't again have to be within the same school, so you can pair something with arts and sciences, with business, with engineering, same thing goes with the minors and we do also have accelerated master's programs, so you can accomplish two degrees in four years as opposed to the traditional six. So what we are most well known for is research and projects. Uh, about 50 years ago, so 100 years after the university's founding, the administration and faculty came together to kind of flip the model on its head to really prepare students for the reality they'll face when they graduate by implementing a project-based learning. So we actually have an institution on our campus where we teach project-based learning to other universities and high schools. Um, 
So that is how long we have been performing this way. And so when we say project-based learning, <clears throat> that doesn't just mean that we just have a project in every class. Uh, we have made other adjustments, such as operating on a quarter system where students only take three classes at a time so they can really get in depth in what they're learning and not spread themselves over five or six classes. Our grading policy changed as well. No pluses and minuses, so you only get an A, B, or C. So that way when you're doing group work, you're really focusing on that project and not who's going to get the best grade. But the big thing here is that we have these global projects. So students can do a project off campus. Uh, about 90% of our students will do a project off campus, 60% outside of the United States, where you're doing work for a sponsor, so a company, a government agency, or a nonprofit that counts as course credit for us. Uh, junior year will be more of an interdisciplinary project where you're going to be looking at how STEM and society interact. But senior year will be a big focus on your major. Um, so it could be like a large capstone or a research project. And we do have uh, scholarships provided so that no student has to pay airfare or anything like that to take part in one of these projects. So in terms of internships, co-ops, and full-time jobs, our Career Development Center is going to work with all of our students starting from the first time they step foot on campus for the rest of their life to help them access these kinds of opportunities. If you wanna see specifically your major, um, whether it is what companies they're going to work for, what the average starting salary was for a specific class year, all of that information is found on our Career Development Center website. Um, it's called the First Destination Outcomes Report. So six months after graduation, we survey all of our seniors for the class of 2020. Of the graduates, we had a 92% response rate, 95% were either fully employed in something directly related to their major, or doing some kind of other program like a graduate degree. Campus life, uh, we are residential, so we have residence halls. Uh, first year students do live on campus. After that, you can choose where you wanna live, either on campus or off. We have about 235 different clubs and organizations. So anything from our athletics, we are NCAA Division III. Uh, we have Greek life, we have things like pre-professional societies, like uh, Society of Women Engineers or OSTEM, which is out in STEM for students who uh, identify as LGBTQIA+, uh, or we'll have things like SHEP, the Society of Hispanic Engineers. Uh, additionally, we have things that are cultural organizations like the Brazilian Student um, Association or the International Student Council, and we'll have uh, different you know, traditional volunteering clubs, things like that, up to the weird ones like two separate cheese clubs because apparently you can never have enough cheese. Um, so we have a wide variety uh, there as well. Our mascot is a goat, so the cheese club isn't that random. Um, and that brings us to the application process. So we are on the common application. Uh, we have early decision, which is binding, early action, which is non-binding, and regular decision. So you can see all the deadlines there. We are test blind. We do not accept ACT or SAT scores. We were test optional for 14 years, but we realized that uh, students who submitted tests and students who did not had the exact same success at WPI, so we just decided to get rid of it altogether, and there is no fee to apply either. In terms of scholarships and aid, 97% of our students receive something from us. You can get either need-based merit or both, and if you participate in either FIRST or VEX Robotics, we do have specialty scholarships. So that brings it to the end. I'll put my email in the chat so that we can move on to the next school. Thank you so much. And again, participants, if you have questions for any of our schools here at any time, you can use that Q&A function. Up next, we have Stevens Institute of Technology. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can also see my screen here. Uh, my name is Jackie Williams. I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Admission at Stevens. And today we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about what the Stevens difference is in a very short period of time. Um, so we're gonna go through this list of things um, very quickly, including academics, student life, our location, our outcomes, very quickly, the application process and our pre-college programs. So Stevens is located in Hoboken, New Jersey. We're known as the square mile city home of Frank Sinatra, literally right across the river from Manhattan. I'll show you a few pictures in a little bit. Um, Hoboken and our location really helps us to um, secure things like internships, co-ops, and job placement. Um, we really believe in our excellence in research, where we have several national research centers of excellence, 
And then our return on investment is extremely high with a very high average starting salary for our class of 2020, which I will also touch on in just a few minutes. The programs that we offer at Stevens um, include programs in engineering, sciences, humanities, and the arts, computer science, and business. We are known for our programs in engineering where you would receive a bachelor's of engineering degree, which is different than a bachelor of science degree in engineering. A bachelor of engineering degree means that you're getting a broad-based engineering curriculum first, so your first year, year and a half. You're taking core engineering and core hands-on design classes, so you are doing hands-on work from day one of your freshman year. And then by your sophomore year, you choose your major and then you go deeper into your program. So that when you graduate from Stevens, you graduate with both breadth in engineering and depth. We feel that it makes our students more marketable for uh, employers when you graduate. You learn how to work with several different types of engineers, not just one specialty. Um, we like to use the car as an example where the car is not just a mechanical engineer anymore. You need an electrical engineer, a computer engineer, a software engineer, a mechanical engineer, all of the above to really, really, really make a car function as a whole. We are also known for our programs in computer science where we specialize in both computer science and cybersecurity. Something unbeknownst to a lot of people are our programs in the humanities and the arts where we focus on uh, two specific programs, music and technology and visual arts and technology. Music and technology is our sound production and music production program. Visual arts and technology is our spin on um, uh, digital imaging, um, animation, and visual arts. So again, several different programs. Many of our students do choose to major, double major, major and minor. Again, making them more marketable when they graduate from Stevens. Life as a Stevens Duck, we are Division Three in Varsity Athletics. Um, our mascot is the duck, meaning that we are the most flexible and well-engineered animal in our opinion. Um, we also have over 150 clubs and organizations ranging from dance, theater, drama. We have a very lovely theater department at our school. Um, again, varsity sports, club sports, intramural sports, um, student government, entertainment committee, of course, with Manhattan right across the river. Um, our entertainment committee is very active, bringing students both to different shows um, and events and bringing different shows and events to our campus. Um, so again, super active student body. We have just over 4,000 undergraduate students on our campus, and we are a very residential campus located again in Hoboken, New Jersey. So in Hoboken, uh, Hoboken is one square mile. Um, you can see in the different photos here just how close Manhattan is. We have one of the best views ever in my opinion, um, but we have a very bucolic setting on our campus. So you really have the best of both worlds where you have um, a very traditional campus setting really paired with the city life experience just right across the river. Um, we are residential. Our, all of our freshmen do have the opportunity to live on campus. It's not required, but over 90% of our first year students do elect to live on campus. After that, housing um, can be either on campus or off campus. Many of our students do elect to live in off-campus Hoboken apartments, um, which are fully furnished and absolutely beautiful to really start learning that independent living lifestyle. And then finally, you'll see sort of in the bottom photo that we have two brand new residence halls scheduled to open next fall. Those are going to be reserved for upperclassmen, absolutely beautiful views of the Manhattan skyline, state-of-the-art rooms connected by a bridge that is a brand new student center. So lots of great things happening on our campus. Very quickly, some professional statistics and career outcomes. We're ranked 17th in the nation for return on investment. We have a 95% placement within six months of graduation. A lot of our students will take part in co-op internship or research, um, as well as study abroad. So you can see the professional practice breakdown there. And our students, again, are very well prepared due to their professional practice outside the classroom. Very quickly, with regards to the application, um, we are part of the common application, or you can submit the Stevens custom application. We have early decision one, which is November 15th deadline, early decision two, which is a January 15th deadline, and a regular decision deadline of January 15th. So two early decision deadlines and one regular decision deadline. If you are interested in applying to any of our accelerated programs, specifically accelerated pre-medicine, 
you need to apply by November 15th. That is a separate application process for us. We are also test optional this year, which is very exciting. And we require the FAFSA and CSS profile for merit and or need-based awards. We offer both. Finally, just a quick plug for our summer pre-college programs. If you're going to look for something to do this summer, think about Stevens. Um, we do have a lot of programs in exploring career options in engineering and science, one or two week residential programs. And here's my contact information. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Up next, we have the Missouri University of Science and Technology. Good evening. My name is Sarah Moore. I am uh, the admissions counselor from Missouri University of Science and Technology. Uh, we are located in Rolla, Missouri, which is in the heart of the Ozarks. We have lots of streams, rivers, and lakes nearby for our students' recreation. Lots of canoeing, kayaking, caving is big in Missouri, so we have a spelunking club on our campus. Um, and that's just an overview of campus. In the lower left-hand side, you'll see a replica of Stonehenge. That's one of our uh, claims to fame. Uh, concrete is one of our specialties in our civil engineering department here on campus. So we have a Stonehenge. And at all of the uh, equinox uh, times during the year, we have special celebrations on our campus. Sarah, just FYI, you're on yes. um, presenter view, but we can okay. still see everything. Okay, well, we're just going to hopefully stay on it and just keep on going. Uh, we are known for engineering and computer science. Uh, we have 15 different engineering uh, majors and computer science as a major. Uh, that's just about the most any school in the country has. Uh, you'll note there at the top, we have aerospace engineering. There are only a, a limited number of schools in the country that offer aerospace. Uh, we have architectural engineering. We're one of only two schools in the country that offers ceramic engineering as an undergraduate major. We have all the traditional engineering programs. Computer science is actually our second largest major on campus. And um, metal, another out of the ordinary major would be metallurgical engineering. We're one of uh, only seven undergraduate programs in the country. We have mining. Uh, we are the only school in the country that has a, an actual uh, practice mine on campus. And within that major, we offer uh, an explosive certification and we're the only school in the country that offers a PhD in explosives. We also have uh, our a nuclear reactor on a campus. It's a small facility, but our undergraduate students get hands-on experience, uh, which is very rare for under, undergraduates to have that experience. Um, almost all of our engineering and computer science majors offer uh, bachelor's, master, and PhD. Uh, along with our uh, engineering curriculums, uh, we're about 75% engineering and computer science. We're about another 10% uh, the pure math and science disciplines. We have applied mathematics, chemistry, physics, psychology, all of which are foundations for the uh, engineering curriculums. But we have some outstanding um, arts and business majors. Our business major is rather unique. Uh, if you have a, a major in business and management systems, you will have a minor in information science and technology, and the reverse will happen as well. If you have a major in information science and technology, you will have um, a minor in business, and that makes our majors in those two areas extremely hireable with starting salaries very close to what um, our engineering students will have. You might wonder what there is to do in Rolla, Missouri. Yes, we are a little bit smaller town. We're about 20,000 people with about 7,100 students. About 5,500 of those are undergraduate students. Uh, those students come from um, 48 different states and 63 foreign countries. So we are a very diverse uh, population, even though we're in a smaller um, considered rural area. Uh, we do have over 250 clubs and organizations on campus. You see a few pictures there. Uh, we are NCAA Division II athletically. We will be having 16 sports this next year. Um, we have a very active intramural and club sports program. Um, we also have 
20 different design teams on our campus. That's something that's really critical for our um, STEM majors. Uh, I think that's the largest number that any school offers in the United States. We have been world champions uh, recent years with our Mars Rover team in our solar car. Uh, pictured there, you'll see our Formula SAE uh, racing car, which is one of our very popular teams. Our rocket design team has been uh, ex extremely successful as well. And on the lower right, you'll see our aviation team. Uh, other exciting teams that we have, um, we have a concrete canoe. Uh, we have a steel bridge team. Uh, one that most any of our students uh, from our campus in any major might participate on would be our Engineers Without Borders team. We have projects in four different third world countries where we are um, attempting to help with water resources and water resource management. Um, but one great thing about our design team program is that any major in our school can be on any team. Uh, it's up to the student. Uh, you can be involved right away as a freshman and uh, can participate as, as little or as much as you would like to. And we strongly emphasize uh, that participation. Uh, it definitely helps you get internships in co-ops in full-time employment. Uh, we do have two outstanding career fairs per year. Uh, they are generally uh, some of the largest in the country. Um, our average starting salary for 2020, it runs about a year behind, was $67,520 this last year. Uh, we will have about 800 students per year doing internships and co-ops. Uh, they might be anywhere in the country. Generally, but they will go to between 35 and 45 states. Um, many uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, will um, host our students for internships and co-ops. And uh, so they will be just about any place that you can think of. We also do have a global engineering program, which is a combo degree. Um, you would graduate with two uh, degrees from s &T, where you would have the opportunity to delve into uh, either um, a language, uh, the language of French or Spanish and have an immersive culture experience uh, in that country uh, as well as an internship in that particular country. That's a new program for us. It just started this last year. Uh, we'll have about 4,000 different employers actively recruiting our students every year. Uh, so uh, we also have the 15th ranked career center in the United States for helping our students. We have about a 90% placement rate at graduation. Uh, on to our uh, application. We are part of Common App. We have our own application, as you see there. Uh, we our top scholarship is Distinguished Scholars Award, and we do uh, grant merit-based scholarships of varying amounts. Our total cost is about $43,000 per year, and that's everything, tuition, fees, room and board, and books. And I will share my information uh, in the chat so that we can move on to the next uh, presenter. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Illinois Institute of Technology. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Excited to talk with you a little bit about Illinois Tech and why it might be a great option for you. If you can't already tell by the screen, we are located in Chicago, just a few minutes from the immediate downtown core of the city. So it's a nice urban campus. It's a setting where you're gonna get a chance to really take advantage of everything that a great city like Chicago has to offer because we have two public train stops directly on campus. So in terms of what Illinois Tech uh, is, who we are, we are a STEM-based institution like all of the others here this evening. What you're gonna find is a really a great opportunity for you to go deep into some of these programs. Things like engineering, computer science, architecture. I'm gonna show you a whole list of the majors on the next slide. The opportunity to definitely study in some of these different programs here. We're a smaller school with about 3,100 undergraduate students. And we have a pretty diverse community coming from almost every state in the US as well as about 80 different countries. Um, definitely a place where you can find your niche find people who are similar to you and hopefully make some really great connections for years to come. Now at Illinois Tech, we want you to get to know your professors. We really want you to connect with them. We want you to see them as a resource, not just a person standing there lecturing to you. They're going to be helping you on your, your uh, pathway to education. They're going to help you pick the courses that you need. They're going to help you think about what do I do today to get to the point where I want to be in the future and to get maybe that first, second, or even th third job down the road. 
Now at Illinois Tech, you do start out in your major your very first year. We want you to get deep into that program and we'll help you do that right away. Now here's a list of all the majors. It's a lot of info, I know. Basically what I want you to know from this is that we have five individual colleges. The College of Engineering, our architecture school, the College of Computing, the College of Science and Letters, and then our Stewart School of Business. All really great options at Illinois Tech. And a lot of them are gonna have some programs you maybe have never heard of before. Things uh, like digital humanities, behavioral health and wellness, food science and nutrition, pathways that you may not have even known existed. I encourage you to take this time, learn about some of these different programs that you've heard about from other schools this evening, as well as ours. Something maybe you've never thought as a career pathway could be open to you. We also have accelerated pathways in things like law, medical, dental, um, optometry, as well as direct admissions pathways for uh, BO, uh, BSDO programs. Great options for students. In addition, you can pursue all of these programs as both majors and minors. And we have some accelerated pathways for direct uh, master's degree programs as well. You can finish both a bachelor's and a master's degree in only five years. Now at Illinois Tech, it's not obviously 100% classroom. We really want to see how you personally interpret these concepts, how you're going to apply them, how you're taking this information and making it different in your own unique way. Now, some of the ways that we do that are shown here on the screen. Those could be things like undergraduate research, for sure. A lot of our students are gonna do that at Illinois Tech and we're gonna to help to support those efforts for you. It could be through interprofessional projects, which is a year long problem solving course that you'll get a chance to take during your time at Illinois Tech. It's all about helping you to make connections with others, bring the best of your individual experiences and hopefully make a real impact on society. And lastly, here on the slide, we have our Elevate program. This is all about helping you explore opportunities outside of our university. We know that we've got some great things going on but there is a whole world of opportunities. Study abroad, internship, co-ops, short courses out in the industry, whatever it is that you need to help round out that classroom experience, we can help provide through our Elevate program. Now it's not 100% academic here at Illinois Tech, though our students are quite a brainy bunch. We do want you to have a full, well-rounded student experience. So outside of the classroom activities include things like our over 150 different clubs and organizations, athletics, esports, intramurals, could be fraternities and sororities. A lot of these opportunities exist because of the students coming to us and saying, we want a club and organization dedicated to this. Some of these are gonna be groups that give back to the community. Some might be religious or culturally affiliated organizations. It's all about having opportunities for our students to develop leadership during their time at the university. Now you can see there, one of our really awesome residence halls that we have, that is John and Jean Rowe Village, a suite style residence hall available to all students. We have many different residence hall options. We're gonna require you to live on campus for two years, and then it's optional for junior and senior. Though when you see it, you'll probably decide just to stay on campus all four, four, four years like many of our students do. Uh, now, in terms of our application process, we are a common app institution. One application allows you to apply to multiple schools, many of which you've heard about this evening as well. So great opportunity to, to get that application started, submit it a little easier. What we are going to ask you for is a high school transcript, one letter of recommendation. We are test optional for this year's class. So any seniors in the room, if you have scores, great. If you don't, that's totally fine as well. Um, for future years, um, we'll, we'll ask you to check our website in the spring semester when we officially make some announcements for future season. But in addition to that, what we're gonna be really doing is a holistic review. We wanna see who you are, who you are as an individual, the experiences you've had, what you bring to the academic experience here at Illinois Tech. We're gonna be looking mostly at math and science grades if you're applying for something like engineering or computer science. We do have a few different admissions plans. Those could be things like early decision, early action, or regular admissions as well. So I encourage you to take a look at those on our website and learn more about those different pathways. But the big thing to know is that when you apply to Illinois Tech, that application is used both for admissions as well as for scholarship. Every single student who applies to Illinois Tech and is admitted receives some level of scholarship support. These range from anywhere between 10 to 30, all the way up to full tuition awards. So I really encourage you to visit our website, learn more about scholarships and opportunities that exist for you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, and I am going to wrap it up and pass it off to our last school. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And to our participants, we still have time. If you have questions for any of our schools here tonight, you can use that Q&A function on your screen. Last but not least, we have Oregon Institute of Technology. Hey, folks. My name is Bob Reynolds. 
and I'm an admissions counselor here at Oregon Tech or Oregon Institute of Technology. Uh, this first slide here, you can see that's our main campus. It's in Klamath Falls, which is in Southern Oregon. Um, it overlooks the Cascade Mountains there in the back. Um, there's also a lake as well. The lake's only 10 feet deep, which is a uh, you know, fun fact of trivia right before we get started. <laughs> so don't go swimming in there. It's a lot of algae. Anyway, um, yeah, we are Oregon's Polytechnic University. Polytechnic means we only focus on engineering, technology, healthcare, business, communication, and the applied sciences. And because we only focus on those specifically, we're pretty good at, at those. We, all of our degrees are very top ranked in Oregon and all around the country as well. So let's go, let's get started. All right, so again, we are Oregon's Polytechnic University. Uh, we're a smaller university, only about 5,000 students across all of our campuses. Yes, we have more than one. Um, Again, we offer lots of bachelor's of science degrees and master's of science as well. Uh, but what's really important um, to understand about Oregon Tech is that we are all, all, are all about hands-on education. Um, we're the industry as university. So yeah, you'll be in the classroom, of course, but most of the time you're gonna be in those labs. You're gonna be in our medical facilities if, you're, if medical degrees are something you're interested in. Um, you're gonna be doing an internship or an externship. Um, it's all about getting that hands-on experience in the field before you graduate because employers look for a couple things, right? They look for the degree, but they also look for that experience as well. And you're gonna get that at Oregon Tech and you're gonna get that individualized experiences as well because you know we're a small university, we're a family here. Uh, yeah, we're also transforming. We've spent over $100 million on campus in the last three years, including on that building right there on the top of that uh, slide. That's our seat building. That's our engineering building. It's brand new and it's fantastic. Um, there's lots of top of the line, world-class facilities there for you because, you know, we're all about innovating at Oregon Tech, not only in our programs, but also in our facilities. Um, and again, it makes a difference. What kind of difference? I'll tell you right now. Next slide. So here's a profile on points of pride. What makes us different? What makes us a great option to go to school? Um, again, we have about 5,300 students across both of our campuses. 78% uh, of those are in state, but guess what? That means we really like out of state students <laughs> a lot. So come on and join us. Um, we are powered by the sun and the earth. That's right, we have 7,800 solar panels on campus. Yeah, and we're also geothermally powered too, which means we use geothermally heated uh, water to like heat most of our buildings and our sidewalks too, even during the winter when it snows. <laughs> so you'll never miss a class because if you're walking on those uh, free and clear sidewalks. That's right. We have 40 plus academic programs. Uh, we also have 50 plus class student clubs and organizations. And if you don't see one you like, guess what? You can make your own because uh, we're all about, again, innovation here at Oregon Tech as well. We have 13 sports um, in the NAIA division. Um, and so, you know, although we're a little nerdy, <laughs> we like to get our sports on as well. And then we have two housing options on our Klamath Falls campus, which is our main campus in Southern Oregon. Uh, but look at these points of pride here, these little buttons on the right. 96% uh, of our graduates are either employed or in graduate school by the time they graduate. That's fantastic. That's almost everybody. That's because the education that our folks receive here at Oregon Tech does include that hands-on experience. You're getting the experience in the field and employers really want that. Um, and that pays off, as you can see there. 91% uh, of our undergraduate courses have 30 or fewer students. Um, so you're not going to just going to be a number here. You're going to be part of the Oregon Tech family. That makes a difference. Your faculty are not only your educators, but they're your advocates too. They're going to help you get uh, to where you want to go. And look at that. I have a starting salary, 60K per year. And that's right after graduation in the field that you study here. Uh, Mid-career salaries reported to us are about in the six figures. That was pretty great. Um, so it does pay off that Oregon Tech education and experience. All right. So a little bit more about where we are. Again, our main campus is in Klamath Falls in Southern Oregon, but we do have a Portland Metro campus as well. Uh, we don't have any on-campus housing on that campus, but if you're looking for a little bit more flexibility and more of that Metro experience, again, it's really close to Portland. It's about 20 minutes outside of downtown. Um, we have both flavors for you. Same great education, a little bit different experience. And look, there's those pictures right there. There's the solar panels I was talking about and the lake. <laughs> and that's our Portland Metro campus right there as well. That's where I'm based out of. Um, and I think it's my office over there on the right. So yeah, there it is. That's where we are. And that's what we're all about. All right, look at our programs. We have over 40 of them, including a whole, a whole, a whole, suite, a whole suite of engineering programs, mechanical engineering. Uh, we were the first college to ever offer renewable energy engineering as a degree program as well. And we still do it number one, we're number one ranked. So not only do we use it to power our campus, but we teach it as well. We innovate, we do a lot of the research, we compile all the data. Uh, we have computer systems engineering technology as well. So if computer science is your thing, get on over here. We have that as well. Um, but not just engineering, 
We have tech infused business degrees as well. And tech infused means we're focused on the technology that drives these fields, right? So not only are we going to be, or you're not only going to be learning about accounting and marketing and management, the technology within those fields, it's going to help you innovate, get to the top. And look, cybersecurity. It's one of the top rate programs on campus and it's a growing field as well. A lot of our students choose to do that. Um, it's a fantastic option. All right, we also have health, arts, and science degrees as well, including our medical-related programs, medical laboratory science, nursing, dental hygiene, respiratory care, uh, any applied sciences as well, uh, communication studies, environmental sciences, you name it, it's here at Oregon Tech, and you're going to get a great, fantastic job when you graduate because you get that experience. Again, that's important. All right, we're not only just taking classes, there's also lots of uh, programs on campus as well. We have a great community over here. Uh, but the most important thing to remember is that we are part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, which means you're going to be paying a reduced tuition rate, even if you're out of state in states like Arizona, for example. Um, and that's almost half of the out of state rate. So if you want to come to Oregon Tech, you pay a little bit less, um, even if you're out of state. And that's what it's all about. So, oh, sorry, <laughs> went too far. Come talk to me. That's my name, Bob Reynolds. Uh, that's my email address and my phone number if you're interested in Oregon Tech. Come on, chat me up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our schools here today. Fantastic presentations. Um, I'm excited. I want to come visit all of your schools now. This is great. Um, such a great group today. I'll invite everyone back on screen now. And we have time for, I think, one question here for some Q&A. So um, I'll ask our first question here. And that is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So what advice would you give someone? We'll start with DigiPen and go in the same order. My number one piece of advice is to make sure that you're asking a variety of different people about their experience with the school. I always recommend to reaching out to a current student um, if the school you're looking at offers that. Um, we offer the opportunity to connect with our student ambassadors, um, a number of chat platforms, video opportunities, a student shadow program where you can experience a day in the life. So really talk to students who are in the program that you're considering to see if they are having the experience that you're looking for. Because I know many reps didn't go to the school that they're talking about. I did not personally. I was not a DigiPen student. So it's always good to be able to talk to someone who can speak to the experience directly. So that's usually the advice I give. So that means I have to give different advice. And the different advice that I would give is um, even if you haven't heard of the name of the school before, you don't have a sibling that's gone there or a parent, check it out. You never know what you're going to find. You're doing this process to find the what's, be what's the best fit for you, not what's the best fit for someone else. So it's hard to base it on someone else's experience that you may know. I mean, opposite of what she just said. I mean, within your sphere that you already know of your friends. So just give it a chance because you never know what you're going to find when you start looking outside the box. Hi everyone, my advice is to make sure that you're having open and honest conversations with your family um, about what your wants are, what your needs are, about the financial aspect, about attending the institutions that you're interested in. It's so important that you're all on the same page about um, exactly what it is that you're looking for in an institution. So just have those open and honest conversations as a unit, as a family. I would just say, um, one of the questions I get often is, what are your students like? Uh, what's the personality of your campus? And for students that are looking at us, I recommend that they uh, check out our YouTube videos, particularly our design team uh, videos because uh, that's a real picture of what our students get passionate about. And I would think it's probably similar on all the other campuses here tonight. Uh, and that just gives you that first look at glimpse of the campus, particularly if you're a little bit further away and you're trying to cut your list to the schools you really wanna visit, uh, check out YouTube videos. I would recommend uh, to don't be afraid to try something new. Uh, visit a campus that you maybe didn't think you would like or didn't know about. Um, just take take a step outside that comfort zone. Yeah, and I would say take your time. 
<laughs> give yourself plenty of time to consider all of your options and really get a feel for where you think you're going to be the best fit. That's the most important thing because school is not only just about, in college in general, not only is about the education you're going to receive, but it's also about the community you create, uh, the things that you do while you're in school, both inside and outside of the classroom. So take some time, you know, consider all your options. Uh, and give yourself time to go visit where you think you want to go to. That's the best way to get to know um, how campus life is really like. You walk the halls, walk the pathways, um, make sure you really, you know, kind of fit in because, you know, college is a big, it's a big decision and it's a big investment as well. Uh, so give yourself time. That's what I would say. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Such a great group tonight. I love this. All right. That will wrap up our session, though, for this evening. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule to sign up for more sessions tonight. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.